Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to work on um, digitizing a picture of a rose that I took from my garden. Um, I don't know what kind of roses these are, but they are climbing rose. And we live in the Pacific Northwest. And the, the bush, or the tr shrub, I guess, the rose bush, is planted on the south side of the house. And it gets lots of sun. Um, but it blooms almost all year long, even in December. So anyways, it's just really gorgeous. So today we're going to try to um, take this out of, make this the focus, make the flower the focus of the picture. So um, one of the things that I like to use is paint, and I wasn't going to open it in paint. I was going to go straight there, but I realized that the tool that they have I was going to go straight to sew art, but the tool that they have that allows us to um, crop really close to the flower is actually a tool that we really want. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here and open paint. If you have a Microsoft based computer, then you should have paint for free. Um, okay, so let's. I'm going to copy and paste it from sewer because I found it deep in the dark underbelly of all my pictures. <laughs> oh, it won't let me do that. Let's save as on the desktop. Let's save it as a JPG. We'll call it Rose. Okay, so here we can go to File, Open, the Desktop. I am still using my son's computer. That's why there's all this video game looking stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's just crop out this big part right here to begin with so that we can look at everything easier. I got that a little high. Let's just crop it out. Oops, I forgot how crop works for a second. <laughs> I get confused between the two programs too because crop is one way and I think it's actually, it's the same in here, but I still get confused for some reason. Why did that do that? Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's zoom in and let's go up here to the select freeform selection. This is one of the best features of paint. You can get as close to all of this pink as possible. And the reason why this is important is because whenever we bring it into sew art, it's going to um, reduce the amount of colors of extra color. Oh, dang it. If you mess up, you have to click out and start over again. So let's actually make it smaller so we can, we don't have to roll up the side. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Okay, and what I was saying was, whenever it's in so art, if you bring it in with all the green and the browns and stuff in the background, it's probably gonna have like 600 different colored pixels going on. So we wanna reduce the amount of background stuff as possible. That's what makes doing a photo um, a little bit more successful whenever you're trying to digitize because digitizing takes a lot of thought and time and stuff like that. And if you can cut out a bunch of the crud, that's really awesome. Okay, so there we go. So we've cropped that. And it's still going to have a lot of colors because there is already so many colors. Like, let's just in the rows alone. I'll show you why there's so many different colors. Because in, oops, in graphics, everything is done in pixels. So whenever you open up a picture and a paint, it converts it into all of these little pixels. 
and the pixels are all different colors and they shade and they do all of this really awesome things together to create the rose. Without all the pixels, the rose would all be just one color. And we're gonna make it down to probably 10 colors and it's because I hate changing out thread. <laughs> so if you don't mind changing out thread, you can have a lot, almost all the different colors and, and different um, shades and stuff like that. Mine's gonna be pretty simple. But first thing we do is we get that crop going. So let's select all, copy, and bring it back into sew art. So now let's just, before we paste that in here, let's just look at the colors. Oh, 255, I thought there would be a whole lot more. Okay, so I'm gonna giggle if we bring in the rose and it's still very low. <laughs> okay, so let's just open a new one, edit, paste, and there's the big old rose. Let's see. 256. We actually have more colors. That is hilarious. So there you go, people. We don't need to do the extra cropping out there. You just crop it in here and you can probably just do what I'm going to do anyways. I'm going to use my eraser tool. But because I don't know what color white for sure, I don't know if it's definitely going to be that same white, I'm going to use this dropper tool and go back here. And I, oops. And I get really close in. Okay, so if you don't want to go through all the pain of doing the paint thing that I just walked you through, then <laughs> don't you worry. Just go in and do your eraser. And you'll want to pick a bigger eraser. I'm kind of going to get out of here because that's not where I wanted to start with this. Okay. So we have our rows here. Let's go ahead and bring our colors down so that it's a little bit easier to erase everything because we can use the fill tool and stuff like that. So um, enter the numbers, let's bring it down to 50 so it doesn't alter the image too much too soon. Okay, so that still kind of looks like my rows to me. All right, so I'm going to go over here. Oh, you know what? One of those awesome tools that I always forget about is Posturize. Let's see how pretty Posturize will make it. Posturize basically does what the color reduction and the merge colors tool does. Um, the Posturization will despeckle and merge the colors for you. But if you um, if that's still not enough, which it isn't for me, I'm gonna go in here to the Merge Colors button. I'm gonna seek out these dark colors and I'm gonna try to merge them all into one color that I can get rid of. So let's, and what happens in Merge Colors, so I'll read this really quick. It says, click a color button below to see its coverage in the image. Click Merge to blend that color with the remaining colors or despeckle to remove speckles in that color. Click the Range button to merge or despeckle a range of colors. Shift plus click to merge a button with the next color that is clicked. Control plus click to select multiple buttons. Click the same button again to restore the full image. Okay, so I'm going to do that. All right, but one thing that I've known that, that I've seen that works, I don't have to do the shift or anything like that. I just go up here to despeckle first, and that kind of gets rid of colors that we don't need. Okay, so let's see. Now let's click on that one. That one is probably so tiny that we can't even see it. So we definitely need to despeckle it. That will get rid of it. We don't have to merge it with anything. This one, obviously, because it's 0, 0.00, I don't even understand why it's on here. So we'll merge it. Okay, so click on 148, despeckle. And that got rid of it. Okay, so, and also, if you wanna go in here to merge range or despec range, you can pick anything that's below 50%. So if it's not 50% of the major color in here, it will just automatically despeckle it. So let's go ahead and do that. See what happens. 
Okay, that didn't seem like it changed a whole bunch. So let's go to merge range and we can merge all colors with a percentage over 50. Let's see what that does. I don't know if this is what I want to do, but. Well, it doesn't seem to have changed it very much either. So those all must have been really, really tiny and they were going to take forever to go through. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and despeckle all the dark colors. Okay. Oh, and now it's giving us a range again. I'm learning just like you guys are, so I'm really sorry if sometimes these videos take a little time because I'm fumbling a little bit, but sometimes this stuff throws me for a loop too. <laughs> okay, let's, I don't know why that guy's hanging out. Merge. Okay, let's merge all the dark colors with each other. Can I merge? Okay, cool. Okay, let's get rid of this by merging it and see how it's changing all this to one big continuous piece. We're going to despeckle it. Oh, I shouldn't have despeckled it because it does that dumb. Turns the 0.12 there. Okay, so let's get rid of this. I'm going to just keep doing it until we're down to just our pinks. Okay. Merge and merge. Oops, I didn't want to merge that last one. I do not want to merge that last one. So this last color, despeckle it first because it's got all this gray over there. That's so unfair. So let's despeckle the white, see what it does. That doesn't make any sense. Why is this here then? So merge it. All right, so this is all one color. Let's use our fill tool. Let's grab the eyedropper and pick the white from behind and click that, okay? And then we'll go anywhere that there's big chunks of the gray. All right. So now we'll go back into the merge colors and we will merge that, the red, nope. We will despeckle it. Will it give us that weird, why can't we despeckle it? <laughs> okay, well, whatever. They're so dumb being in the background like that. So we're going to just use the eraser. We could spend all day trying to figure that out with the merge colors tool, but I'm just getting used to it. Okay, so we've got all of our gray out of there. And once you've watched the video and you've seen all my fumbling, hopefully you can do that a whole lot faster. Okay, so now how many colors do we have? We have 14 colors. That's still a lot of jumping around, it looks like to me, with 14 colors. So I'm going to try to make it even lower colors just because um, I think it'll be pretty. And, and it stitches out prettier if you have bigger blocks of color, in my opinion. Whenever things have to jump and jump and you have to go in and you have to cut all the little pieces and stuff. Okay, so it's still at 14 colors. That didn't seem to change much. We can run the wizard, um, but you don't have as much personal control over your creation if you run the wizard. You're just kind of at the mercy of whatever the wizard thinks is appropriate. And I mean, you have a lot of control still, it's still awesome, but I just happen to really love being able to do everything myself and know that it, know how it's all going to come out. Okay, so let's bring this down to 10 and see if it alters the image too much. Not too much. See, I just don't want to mess up too much with this color. So maybe I will go in here with this light pink to kind of highlight that, because that's the part of the rose in the original picture that's yellow. See that? So I want to 
keep that highlighted. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. Yeah, nothing else really needs to stand out as much. Okay, so I have 11 colors. Let's bring it down to seven colors and see what happens. Okay, but we're gonna keep pointing you at pink. Let's do five. Okay. Now that might be too much of an alteration from the original image for some people. I think it's pretty. I think it'll look very, very, very pretty. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and posturize it again because it smooths out all of these rough edges. See how it's really kind of rough there? <laughs> if you do the posturizing, the posturizing kind of, it does, like I said, it does what the color reduction and the merge colors button does, but does it for you. So let's see. What we want to do is try to reduce as many of these little extras, you know, that are here. Um, so sometimes the only way you can do that, you can keep messing with that stuff, but I don't really know how everything is going to turn out if we do. So I'm going to undo what was just done, get out of posturization, and I'm going to grab the brush because the pencil will make a, a line. The brush is actually going to make... It's, it's a line, but it's more, oh, because it has the line, freehand stroke, it's going to be more of a soft line. And if you use the pen, it's more skinny and straight, even with the same uh, setting. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use the brush because I like it to be kind of splotchy and big where I need to go. Okay, so... This is the tedious part of digitizing is whenever you have these tiny little speckles that you don't want to get rid of the color, but you want to get rid of all the little speckles. Um, you just go in and you grab your eyedropper tool. You pick the color you want it to match and you just go in and you paint over it. Okay. And if you don't like how this is, you know, really kind of jagged on the ends, you can soften it up with your brush. Remembering that you still want that shadow, that part of the blending there, that kind of, you know, makes everything cohesive, but you don't want it to be, you know, too sharp. Okay, and sometimes there's parts that maybe you want to um, link together, like these two. Like, I don't want to delete them. They're too big of pieces. So let's just link them together. It's not going to hurt anything. Same with this. And think about, you know, your needle jumping around, how many times that you want to have to stop it and snip it so it doesn't get caught up or, you know, stuck under anything. So I like big blocky pieces because they stitch out really nicely. And sometimes they stitch out, you know, it takes forever to stitch out because of the size of the, the stitch out and because, you know, like a default stitch versus an applique takes forever in a lot of cases. But um, the less color changes you have to do, the happier that whole process is. I hope all that made sense. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. Let's link those together because they are just, you know, blends of color for the rows. She's not going to complain at all if you dress her up. <laughs> okay, so maybe make this a little, little wider. Fill in that hole. And just, you know, you don't want to alter it too much from the original image, but make it your own. Okay, so kind of reminds me of the Great Lakes for some reason. <laughs> okay, all right. So I want to take this red right here and I want to beef this up. Beef all of this up. I don't want it to look funky and stringy in any parts. 
Um, if you've bought a lot of designs, you've probably seen a lot of designs where it will go from like a satin stitch to a bean stitch really easily, and it looks really pretty. Um, but so art just doesn't do that. You can't, um, with the same color, like you can't make it, like if I had a stitch right here, it won't automatically go from being a satin stitch to going to a running stitch. So, um, oh, I forgot the whole point of telling you guys all that. Just getting all into what I was talking about. Um, so you kind of have, oh, so you kind of have to block up your pieces a little bit like anything on the edges, you know, especially on t-shirt material kind of stuff, having tiny stuff with a default stitch on the edges of things, it just kind of eats it up. It doesn't really do what you're hoping that it will do. It'll, and, and it really should be a running stitch or a bean stitch along edges in places where we can only currently with Sew Art add... Um, we would have to, to add an extra step. I hope all of that makes sense. Okay. So I've done a little bit more altering that I'm really comfortable with, but I think it's going to pay off. And fill in any kind of little gaps and stuff like that. Okay, see how there's this little loop right in there? You don't want that because it's just, you know, it's just too much jump. Oh, that's the wrong color. Okay, it's just too much jumbling right there, in my opinion. What? Oh, I forgot to click the red. Okay, so let's just go ahead and fill that in. There we go. All right, and you're probably seeing stuff that I'm missing, but, oh. Let's see. Let's do that. See down here at this edge? We don't want that white to be at the edge because it will do a skip and then we'll have to change the color and start all over. You don't want to do that. I mean, you might want to do that, but that just is a lot of work that you don't need to make for yourself or for anybody if you're selling these. Okay, so now that we've done all that, and it looks a little crazy, <laughs> we're gonna posturize it again because it's gonna take the smooth edges for us again. Make smooth edges out of what we've done. Okay, so it, it also changed that color for me. I'm not too sad about it because I think it, it goes. So let's look at our, our original rows and then our sew art rows. And the cool thing about sew art is we can turn it. So yeah, it maybe looks like the one from the picture, but is it? You know. <laughs> so you know, it's just kind of cool. All right. So here we go. Oh, I I don't want it to be like that though. I want it to look just like the rose. Okay, so we've done all of our cleaning up, all of our, you know, adding in stuff. Let's go ahead and resize it. 3.9. Okay. And now that we've resized it, let's posturize it. <gasps> no, that was too much. <laughs> Okay, do we have any merge colors we need to do? It only has one, two, three, four, five colors. Oh, well, that's perfect then. I thought that it was going to change it a lot when we resized it. Okay, I'm just kind of looking it over to make sure that whenever it fills in stuff, it's, it's not um, having to do a lot of jumps. So I'm just checking everything. Okay, see how down here there's a little, slight little color? It's going to pick up on that. And then over here there's a slight little color. So let's go into the Merge Color Tools and pick the color. Okay, and this is where we should be able to despeckle it nice and easy. Okay. Let's go ahead and despeckle that too, just to be safe. All right. And we'll despeckle this. Okay, I kind of want to get rid of this red right over here. 
So let's despeckle it. Oh, that's cool. And then we'll just despeckle this for the heck of it. Okay, let's get out of here and see how it looks now. So the edge parts are gone, but there's some funkiness now going on. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's not a perfect art, I tell you. And it's not a perfect program. And you and I and the rest of the world trying to figure out this program are not perfect. So don't beat yourself up when you don't understand it. There's a lot of stuff to try to get. You know, I have a video that I made a while back on how to digitize a cat. and it's totally different than this one I'm sure so <laughs> you just you you learn and you grow and you just keep going you know okay so this one looks like it's going to be really pretty and a little wild if I was creating a rose from scratch like as a graphic design I would not make it like this at all but that's kind of the fun of this so let's go ahead and we've already resized it let's get out of this gigantic screen Let's go over here to the stitch image button now. And usually on in my videos, I stay very far away from the auto sew image. But because this is all melded together and stuff, and it's kind of a, like a, um, almost like an oil painting, or I can't think of the right word right now, but it's going to stitch out in a much better way than I could probably pick for it. And I would probably take forever being really, 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 really um, uh, focused on everything that was wrong with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Auto Sew Image. And whenever you have these two options, Sew All Colors or Set Transparent Color. Sew All Colors is if you like the background and you wanted to sew like a white. If you wanted to sew the white back here too and make like a little square patch or stamp or something you know something cute like that but most people don't want the background they just want the image so if you want to get that click set transparent color and then you click on the white and it goes through and it does all the different colors in the order that it believes to be the best <clears throat> okay now the crazy part looks like all this is going to be, you know, just overwhelming, but it won't. It'll be really, really easy. It's going to, you know, take you through the whole steps. And I'm going to go ahead and file and save as. Okay, I start, I uh, turn my um, machine on so that I can get ready to stitch this out. Okay, my passport. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to save a picture. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to try to save it in my passport either. Let's just save the rose. Okay. And I have to double check my pattern size, make sure, make sure that it'll fit into my 4x4 four four hoop, and click Save. And it kind of shows you how it's all going to go. And then it puts in that one, and then the next color. And then the next color. Okay. So give me just one second. I'm going to switch out, um, switch the cartridge out right now. My machine is set up to um, sew. I've been doing a lot of sewing. But now let's put the embroidery piece back on. Thanks for sitting with me through that. So I'm going to turn it on in this way. I can tell you guys how many steps it's going to be. Because this doesn't really give you an honest, it, you're not going to have 27 color changes. It looks to me like there's only going to be three. So we'll see. Okay, so now we've already saved it to our desktop. Let's go ahead and file save as. Ignore that part and save it directly to, it should be showing right here. Oh, <laughs> helps if you plug it in. Okay, save it to the removable disk. The rose, 
save. The first time I digitized a flower from my own garden, it was the coolest feeling in the whole world because it was something that I had literally created from the beginning of its birth. You know, it was a cosmo and I planted the seed from a, from a plant that I had saved for the year before and then, um, and then I grew it. And then it, you know, it matured and then I took a picture of it and then I was able to digitize it and it was terrible. It took me probably three hours to do with a million jumps, but um, it was such an awesome feeling. Okay, so it, I hooked it up to my computer and it looks, or up to the machine and it looks like there are four changes, four, four color changes you're going to do. So there's, first one they're asking for is Carmine. The second one is carmine, the third one is red, and the last one is red. So don't listen to those if you try this. I don't know how to change that outcome. Um, yeah. I don't, I, you know, I'm still learning and stuff. I still am learning my machine as well. So I don't know why it's giving us only two colors, even though there's clearly many different colors going on there. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and clear stitches. Sorry I'm troubleshooting with you guys here, but and this is saying there's five colors. Oh, because of the background. So four color changes. So, oops. What? No, I don't want to select anything. Okay, so let's do auto sew image, set transparent color. Two, three, four. Okay, did you see what I saw? So there was one, two, three, and four. So it's trying to, it's trying to um, assign the same colors here. And I don't understand that. It's showing four different colors on the machine, but it's giving us the same name. So let's, maybe it's because of the, the thread that is chosen. I'm sorry I'm doing this kind of uh, troubleshooting with you guys on here, but maybe you've run into the same stuff, or maybe you're going to run into this in the future, and um, this might help you guys. Okay, so let's just click Brother Polly because it seems to be a pretty well-known thread. Okay, so this PC, let's go straight to there. We'll just save over it. Click Yes. Oh, that still doesn't explain why SoArt is doing that. Two, three... Okay. Okay, so carmine, carmine, red, red. I don't know why it's doing that, you guys. It's giving us four different options to change the colors, though. And so hopefully um, you can figure that out, why that's happening, and help or at least, you know, understand that it does happen and it's weird. So, alrighty. And I know that if you take it over to So What Pro, you can change the colors, you know, and change the color names and stuff like that, change the lineup and everything. Um, but not everybody has So What Pro. So I'm trying not to, to steer you guys there, even though if you do, you can go do that. <laughs> so it, it can make it say whatever you wanted to say in your final um, whenever it uploads to your machine instead of like mine where it's calling for only two colors even though there's clearly four. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this out. I'm going to hoop my stabilizer and get it stitched out and I will take pictures and get back with you guys in a minute. Thanks so much and I wanted to also take a moment to say thanks again for all of the encouragement. Um, it's really, really fun for me to make the videos and it's really fun getting feedback and, and I'm getting better by learning from you guys as well. And this whole journey has been really fun. It's been 
It hasn't even been a year. It'll be a year sometime this month, but I don't think it's been a year yet. Um, I think it's on the 18th. It'll be a year since I've had my um, brother SE425 that I bought at Walmart for 360 bucks, and it changed my whole world. So <laughs> um, I really, really, really appreciate you guys taking your time and and all of the wonderful comments that I get. Thank you so much. All right. See you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, I'm back. And this was step number one. This was the lightest color pink that I have. Um, it's going to print out and, oh, I forgot. I was timing it. Let's see. That took about about an hour to print out this whole thing. So I used a light color on the first one on felt and um, with it just with the garden fabric as a stabilizer. And so <clears throat> before I change colors, I go in and I clip out all of the little uh, jump stitches because you don't want your, your foot to get caught in any of these lines if you don't, if you don't cut out your jump stitches, you know, whenever you're, um, as you're working, it can really cause a problem and break your needle and all kinds of icky stuff. So here's the sew out and just showing each color as it goes. And I used a, a really like dark red orange because I didn't have four colors of pink. So there's a little bit of gapping and I'm not sure if that's from the image or from doing it on felt, but um, here you go. This is it. I hope that this was helpful. If you guys have any kind of um, feedback for me. I really love that. Also, if you can join our group on Facebook and um, post some of the stuff that you've done. And if you're already a member, please start posting some of your guys' sew outs. It's really fun for me to see how everybody's doing. And also, um, it's really inspirational to see what other people have come up with. And um, like I said, I'm learning too. So I want some new ideas. And, and I love seeing when people pull off some really cool stuff. So um, yeah, if you guys can just start sharing your sew outs, that would be really, really awesome. And I'll keep sharing mine. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.